Oh, hey guys! Oh, <laughs> hi guys! Guys, uh, welcome back! Uh, welcome back to the Go Gamers. Uh, so this is the chart. Uh, this is a premiere for our brand new chart makers. Uh, that we have been working on. Me and Ethan finally nailed down which one we're gonna do. Do and um, this this list, as you can probably tell. Tell we have question mark, question mark, question mark, because I wanted to be a surprise, but here's the reveal. Uh, it is actually our top 10 gaming moments of all time. Yep. These moments are moments that just really remind me and Ethan of how far we've come as gamers. Most of them are pretty much modern day because when it comes to our childhood, I can't say I've ever been accomplishing too much. Yeah, me. Oh, the only thing I could say one thing, though, that sadly it might not be on the list. I'll put it as an honor mentionable ahead of time. It is definitely completing the Poydex on Pokemon White and Black 2 and FS Sapphire. I'll say there was a couple games I completed on Poydex. I can't remember that. Yeah, that is definitely an honorable, honorable mention because I did complete a Poke Pokedex in Sun and Moon, Moon and X and Y as well, so that is a fit. Fair one. But, um, that is just the only honorable mention. Mention. Other than that, that the rest of this list is pretty much stuff that me and Ethan had to come up with <sighs> off the top of our heads. Now, this is only consistent of the best, except for one particular one, because we got help later with this particular moment. Anybody who's been a long-time fan of the channel, looking at you, Joshua, and maybe anybody else, uh, would know this particular, particular moment, and the first one we're going to be mentioning as our top 10. So, again, just to remind you, these are moments that really resonate with us, us as gamers, in the modern, modern day, or in the old school days of the old times of the Go Gamers. So, um, yeah. Some of these are off screen, too. Some of these are on screen, in or we've recorded videos of, so just a heads up. Um, and if we do, and if I have recorded videos of them, we will, I will, will leave, um, links in the description below so you guys can check them out later. Um, but yeah. So, on number 10 on the list, and you are number this one in particular, Joshua, if you're watching this, which just happened to be a Rocket League pun live stream. <laughs> oh, man, I can't even remember that. We were making such good puns in that one. Uh, that one was just, uh, you could say it was a blast. <laughs> I got blast from the sky. <laughs> uh, uh, I can't believe it. Uh, sword on by. Yep. <laughs> uh, all puns aside, though, it was a very funny stream. If you haven't checked that one out, I would recommend you do so. Do so. It's in our Go Gamers live stream playlist if you want to check it out. Um... Just don't check out the first Rocket League live stream. Now that one would be top, probably our number one top worst gaming moments. <sighs> okay, number nine, and even we remember this one. Uh, Hyrule Warriors co-op back on the shut up. Wii U. Yes, I do. Uh, now for those who don't know, Hyrule Warriors is part of our now Warriors one. Our Warriors Wednesday series uh, uh, is basically uh, Zelda, but Destiny Warrior style. Uh, it has been ported from the Wii U to the Switch and the 3DS. 3DS is High Warrior Legends, and now to Switch as High Warriors Definitive Edition, for those who are searching for the game. Um, um, and honestly, on the original, in case you guys didn't know, Ganon was, whoo, he was not a cakewalk. And after facing him in Hyrule Warrior Legends, I can still say that he is not a cakewalk. I'm expecting the same for the Definitive Edition because it's based off of the 3DS version. Woo! It combines with the Wii U and 3DS. Yeah. Uh, just so you guys know, I was playing on easy mode. Easy mode! That's how hard he was. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, you could say that me and, he, uh, uh, me and Ethan got our butts whooped. But we worked together, and Ethan uh, came in last minute to save us before we had to redo the whole thing over again. No kidding. Kid, uh, 
it can't even come to the game. Pop was about to die. I was like, oh no, oh no, oh no. And then Nephi came in last minute with some, with one day it was the light, and I was like, oh, thank goodness. You saved us, bud. Yep. Literally again. Of course. Uh, yeah, so that's definitely a gaming moment that will stick with me forever. Of course, it's all, also a Fire Emblem co-op, but... I could lie when I say Fire Emblem while it's kind of easy. <laughs> that's not the one I had to say the moment. <laughs> yeah, definitely. That's for another video. I don't know time. But, uh, yeah. Um, now, number eight is half good, half bad. Because, uh, the good part came later. Uh, it's... I don't like mentioning this. Ethan's Dark Souls 3 live stream. Now, you probably will say, but that's a bad moment. Not completely. Thankfully, someone, luckily, came upon our live stream, live stream and helped Ethan out a little bit at near the end of it. So, I'm not sure who you are, but whoever you are, uh, thank you again for helping out Ethan, Ethan. Never again will we dive into Dark Souls without uh, out looking stuff up first. And I think it's like, I think it's like, no offense, but that's actually an extremely hardcore game. Now you might say, but if it's an extremely hardcore gamer. Well, yes and no. Yes, if you're talking about, there's different types of hardcore we could talk. Yeah, there's hardcore, super hardcore, and then extreme hardcore, which I can say is Dark Souls. If it's not that type. Yet. I'm just like in the middle, you can say. Pretty much. Uh, <laughs> That's simple hardcore. Speaking of which, uh, which, which, number seven is a moment that, well, let's just say it's one of the very few times that I actually ended up beating my words. I mean, that happens a lot, a lot off screen, but this is one of the few times I even look at doubting. Ethan scale. It's when Ethan finally beat the Final Fantasy VII hard mode. Well, yes, hard mode and uh, the Seven Star Challenge. Okay, let's talk about this first. Uh, Seven Star Challenge. Oh boy, you know what I end up doing, guys? I had to like grind almost a couple days in a row. I had to couple. I have to grind almost a long time for the materials, and then I had to like do the Seven Star Challenge. I know some bosses like they're a little bit tough, but they're easier when you get to several of them like Bahamut, Pride and Joy. Bahamut is actually the toughest I noticed. I fuck glad I got through him like a couple times in a row. Yeah, uh Ethan only had to face him twice. Twice. Yeah, you got me twice. He probably got got extremely lucky. Lucky, because I've heard people had a lot more trouble than two times. Well, with, with Pride and Joy, I found that out he's not the hardest of uh, of all challenges, I noticed. I thought he was going to be. I was expecting to be at first, but my expectations went low on that one. Any, yeah, but anyways, getting back to this. So, when this lockdown started, Ethan, I had his copy of Final Fantasy VII, as you know, and Ethan wanted to tackle the hard mode. Off screen... I had high doubts that Ethan could do it. Because the reason is, when Ethan tried hard mode mo previous times and I've seen him, seen him, he's reacted pretty badly to it. So I thought that this time he wouldn't do it. Man, I didn't even take that as a challenge. And I ended up hitting my words. Key reminder to never doubt an RPGist. Well, let's just say this. It takes a lot of research. It takes time. It takes patience. You just have to, like, play it a lot to get used to, depending on certain games, really. Had it not been for this lockdown, I probably would have been right. So, you got lucky this time, bud. But I wouldn't let you being Final Fantasy VII Remake get to your head, okay? <laughs> Alright, now number six. This isn't really all that game a moment, but... For me and Ethan particularly, because we were new to both of these series, series for number six and number five, <sighs> these two particular kicked up. That uh, the first one, number six, will be Soul Calibur for Star Killer. For those who don't know what we're referring to, as you guys know, Soul Calibur four, five, six, and Broken Destiny, 
Xbox and PSP all have guest characters characters in their games. Yeah, so if we we're talking about Star Killer, those of you who don't know are new to that character. His origin story, he's actually from a game called Force Unleash. Star Wars Force Unleash. Yeah, it's part of the Star Wars franchise, as you can probably tell it anyway. Uh, but anyways, wait, wait, what we both didn't know when we were first playing through the arcade mode is that we were just about to play one of, uh, gaming's most hardest fighting game bosses. Starkiller was literally one of the very first videos that Ethan and I collabed up uh, back in the day. And obviously I didn't redo that at the beginning of this year of me playing Starkiller with a new, as a new and refreshed gamer, now having me played a lot more Soul Calibur. Gotta say he still kicked my butt, of course, but... I did a lot better. But compared to back then, uh, looking back, gotta say, say, I am disappointed with myself though, for not doing my research first. Oh, boy. And that's... even, even Ethan struggled. And Ethan has more fighting game experience than me. But let's, let's be fair on this, guys. I have more experience on Tekken than Soul Calibur at this point. Exactly. So we even got caught off guard by that one. One. Eventually, though, we did beat Star Killer, but I gotta say that was when the vi uh, when we finally did. I was like, finally. Mm -hmm. Sheesh. Yeah. You would think for a guest character they wouldn't make him this hard, but I guess I underestimated Ben I uh, Namco immensely. Immensely. Yep. Mostly, because clearly five and six is okay. Mo bosses weren't even tough, tough, and that's coming from me. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, I'm not sure, and I was playing on easy mode. Yeah, you hear me? Easy mode. Yep, easy mode, folks. I'm not sure what to, uh, Blade and Namco did with the CPU on that one for Star Killer, but whatever they did, they did a pay apparently did a pretty good job of making him a hard boss, perhaps a little too hard. Uh, what was your reaction when you finally beat him, bud? I'll be honest, I'll be like, Ah, oh, man, he's so extremely, like, it feels like he's unstoppable when I played him. <laughs> I guess him, I mean. Uh, yeah, no kidding, jeez. He's probably way harder than, like, the rest of the games I remember in the past when I play him. Not to the modern day, in the past. Yes. Like I'm used to. Yeah. Now, if you were to face him again, again? Well, he did one time off screen when I was recording footage for him. Let's just say he got his butt whooped. Let's be honest here. It's been a while. While, and not to mention, Ethan is not used to play, uh, has gotten more used to playing Soul Cowboy on PlayStation than Xbox. So, yeah. That one was probably a recording not worth putting up. <laughs> now, number five, five, this one was probably the harder of the two. I mean, Star Killer gave us a Challenge. He did, he did, I noticed. But Street Fighter Force Seth Seth gave me and Ethan, Ethan a challenge. Now the first phase of Seth, Seth for those who have played a Street Fighter Four any version version, you guys probably know he's a cakewalk first first round. But the second round You're in big trouble, guys, you're in big trouble. He copies moves from the other characters. Well, like, kind of like how we explain it. Like, some of the moves, like, like Ryu and Ken-ish, I would say. Yes. Yes. And some other characters in the game, too. Who? You Street Fighter Five had fans. Oh, I know which one. Son of Boom from Girl. That's a good, another example. You, you, uh, so, uh, you Street Fighter Five fans have it easy. Easy. Seth can only copy one move now, which is V-Trigger. Tr trigger from any character. Character. But back in the day, we had to deal with that that from multiple characters. And there was no way we could get around it. Around it other than playing well. Mm -hmm. I gotta say, uh, I gotta say, that was probably the harder of the two, too. And it gave me and Ethan a run for our money in terms of fighting games. jeez. Oh, when we finally beat, when I finally beat Seth for the first time ever was Cammy, I was like, Okay. Sorry, I doubted you, Capcom. Sheesh. I think what it is is, is in my past experience, 
I'm used to Tekken. Tekken more than the Street Fighter. And uh, what was your, your when you finally beat Tough? What was your reaction, bud? I was like, oh, it's too extreme. It's a turn extreme. How many extreme attacks you can do in that? And thus, gotta say, gotta say, say. I mean, seven stuff hard in the new Street Fighter Five. I've uh, uh, Champion Edition arcade mode, mode, but still, I would say plus is probably harder. Yup. Uh. Uh. But uh, yeah, that is number six and number five for us. Of course. Uh, number four is a dual moment because this. Mainly has to do with Ethan, not me. Okay, so the first one, obviously, there's a live stream for this. You guys can check it out. It is Ethan finally beating the dreaded Clash One. Yup, that one I know, I remember. Oh, jeez, I finally I passed rules, breach levels, passing the hard boss levels. I thought it was that was supposed to be easy at first, but then it turns out. BAM! It went harder than I expected. And that's what Ethan gets for doubting platformers! <laughs> and not only that, final boss. Are you serious? <laughs> oh, by the way, we're talking to the Reignite, uh, uh, we, uh, uh, Insane Trilogy. Trilogy. Just so you guys think. Just so you guys know, I don't think Ethan wants to go back and try the original. Original. If it was hot here, I can guarantee you it's probably going to be hot on the original. Uh, well, this is like the same moment I remember. Like, what is this? Yeah. You could probably tell that Ethan's never going to be playing Crash 1 again. Nope. Not that this time around. Uh, but yeah. The other one is Ethan Platinumine. Three Spiral Games. Well, yep. not original. The Reignited Trilogy Spirals. Better. <laughs> yes. So Ethan Platinum all three, which is his technically first Platinum. Now, you may notice on his profile, if you're friends with him, uh, that he beat Telltale Batman. Technically, yes, that is his first Platinum, but... Not completely. Legit. Because that one's not really a game, per se. I mean, yes, yes, all you do is just watch, like, like you watch an episode, and then you just go lot on, like, choosing decisions. True. There's a little gameplay, but not by that much. Uh, uh, but anyways, ways, so yeah, that is definitely one of the biggest game mo mo moments that Ethan, Ethan and I will always remember. But if anybody, one of you who are new to the channel are wondering if Ethan's gonna, ever going to play Crash 1 again, Here's the definitive answer from Ethan himself. No thanks. <laughs> I think he, I think Ethan's got through enough, enough torture for one playthrough. That's for the bridge levels. I gotta say, say Ethan probably. Uh, one thing I will say, Ethan probably thought those thing people were saying that Crash One was hard. He brushed it off like, nah, it's not probably not that hard. That was at first I heard. And boy, did Ethan end up eating his words. Oh, <laughs> One of the very few times I didn't actually eat my own because I know how hot platformers can be. Seven colors for our bosses. Hi, by the way. Uh, so, yeah. Okay, number three. This is in our top three. And obviously, we have unboxing videos for this one, because this is something that me and Ethan got ourselves and unboxed for the channel. But this was way back in the day before That's the That's like three years from now. Yes. Yes, you probably know what we're talking about. The Nintendo Switch launch. Uh, now you probably think, oh, that's not that memorable. Oh, wait till you hear the details. Well, or the story. Okay, so, oh, first thing. Well, my dad taught, thought we were crazy enough to go out to a si system launch. Second thing, we didn't have coats on, so it was freezing cold. Oh, it's like, you, it's like you're standing outside like an Antarctic zone. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And this was for, oh, I don't know, about, I want to say two to three hours. Oh, jeez. I kind of remember that moment myself. Uh, and then my dad came and got his coats. Thank goodness. But it was still freaking, freaking cold out. No kidding about that, huh? 
<laughs> man. It, was, it was a too, too much coldness, man. Before you ask, was it snowing? No! No, it wasn't. Thank goodness, because if it was, then you probably think we're more crazy. Although, uh, I, yes. although I do have another honorable mention, but we'll get to that after this one. Uh... Uh, the Nintendo Switch, uh, so, yeah. Then we finally got our Switches, and obviously, unboxed them on the channel, so, me and Ethan did our own individual ones. Yep. Once, so I'll leave links to both mine and Ethan's in the description below. Yep, exactly. Uh, now number two, we obviously did a video for this as well. Well, and again, again, this will be another big moment for us, the Nintendo Switch launch. Uh, the Nintendo Switch Launch event. Yep. Slash preview. Now this, uh, this is a funny story. Story. Now obviously we heard about the event, but but and it was coming to our town, but I had no chance because I knew how big this system looked and was probably gonna be, and I thought, man, Nintendo's not gonna choose me. Wait on one day, literally a couple days before the Switch event came, came. I got an email from Nintendo. And they said I got invited to the Switch event. And I could bring a friend. My mouth dropped. That was crazy. I was like this. What? I had to literally pinch myself twice. Twice to make sure I wasn't dreaming. Did Nintendo just choose me for one of their exclusive events? That almost never happens for any of us Go Gamers. Not even me. No kidding. Uh, uh, I say another moment that actually just happened recently to one of our members, but hush, hush. <laughs> I can't really say it. Say it because, yay! Let's just say it has to do with Microsoft, and I'll leave it at that. Uh, but yeah, yeah. Uh, needless to say, Ethan, and I did go to the Switch event. It was a blast. Uh, but it will be. Partially a regret for Ethan. Okay, I'll tell you my own name. I remember that moment. Ah, that moment I want to try that Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild Devil. But guess what? I've been standing in the line for almost a long time. And Ethan missed out and tried so many other games. Not his fault. fault. Not his fault, of course. Of course. Of course, but that's not even twice to be a sucker for graphics. No kidding. <laughs> uh... Uh, and from now on, he's put gameplay in for the graphics. First time not to fool them. No kidding. Uh, but, hey, 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 hey. It could be worse. Worse. Although, makes you wonder if we ever do in the, get chosen for another Nintendo Switch event. Event end of some sort. But, I wonder if I'll get chosen again. Given my fantastic track record, record of Nintendo Switch games I have in a bin over there, I would probably say yes. At least I hope. Uh, but one of the biggest regrets I have from that event... <sighs> I can't speak about it. You tell him, bud. Let's just say he was in the tournament in uh, Street, Ultra Street Fighter 2. And he had to play as giving up the stage with somebody playing... Ryu, I think? No, Chun-Li. Chun-Li, yeah, yeah, yeah. Chun-Li, Chun-Li. Yeah, when I saw up there, I was like... Oh, jeez. I hope people don't remember him now. <sighs> yeah, so for, for those who remember this uh, Nintendo Switch which event in Illinois, that's all I'm going to say. Uh, uh, and you remember a guy named, well, uh, I'll just say his name begins with the letter A and ends with an X. That was me. And to whoever I faced... You're good chun -Li, dude. You're very good chun -Li. <laughs> If we ever face again at any point, point, I want a rematch. Rematch. I've gotten much better with Cammy. Yeah, and also another thing, too, is, is that let's see if you own any other uh, Street Fighters, like Street Fighter 4 or 5 or, yeah. Yeah, and if you do, just want to let you know, I want to take you out again, uh, yeah, again, man. So if you're that, uh, so if you want to dive in and face me, I want to take you out. Eon, bring it. Bring it. I'm ready for round two. <laughs> two. Yep. Two. And I'll even live stream it, too. 
Two, two, just to make up. Up. Uh, here's hoping I don't embarrass myself twice. Ah, <laughs> uh, but anyways, you knew, needless to say, it was still a great event. We even had a blast. We got to meet some people. Yeah, we do. Uh, so yeah, definitely the second best moment for me and Ethan as gamers. Yep. You're probably wondering what our top number one moment is, is the Switch event in second place, because you think as Nintendo fans that'd be first. No. Number one of our top best gaming mo moments, slash trips, yes, you heard me, trips, of all time, is our Comic -Con, Wisconsin Comic Con trip. Yes. <laughs> now, that time we had a friend with us, so we had to cut her out a couple times, times because... Obviously, we can't put it in the flame. But, the, uh, of course, main reason of uh, why that trip was so amazing is because we got to meet so many different people, so many different cosplayers. Still have pictures from it. If you haven't seen our vlog for that uh, that trip, yes, we did vlog. Be sure to check it out. Um, and also, also, and I still have this in very mint condition. <laughs> hey, uh, folks. I think I already know which one it is. Yeah, it's right there, for sure. That is it. This. This is a, uh, uh, my copy of Final Fantasy Thirteen, signed by Lightning's actor herself. Mm-hmm. Who voices her. Uh, she also, uh, Apparently, from what I've heard on Behind the Voice Actors, and they're a pretty reliable source, so I would say it's true, uh, voice Paltina in Super Smash Brothers. So, yeah, that's pretty awesome. But, again, if you're watching this, uh, I forgot your name, but if you're watching this, this Miss Lightning's voice actor, thank you again. It was a very great honor to meet you you in person, and you have done a great job voicing Lightning. And, by the way, uh, if you heard me too... Uh, I played one of the games, by the way, and honestly, I loved your character uh, as voice actor, so I'll keep that in mind. Yeah, so, again, definitely going to be forever one of my favorite gaming moments of all time, time, and I'm never selling this. But, yeah. Yeah, anybody wants wants this copy? Nope, 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 nope. I'm not giving it away. Yep. Let's just say... It's not for sale, people. <laughs> yep, it's not for sale. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> but that's not the only famous voice actor we got to meet there. Oh. Well, actually, we got several more, by the way. Just remember, several more. And I'll do mine, and we'll do both. Yep. Okay, okay. Okay. <laughs> so, in addition to that, um, who else did I meet? Oh, you? Um, hey, how about that Halo actor? Oh, yeah. I got to meet the voice of Master Chief, Chief from Halo. Oh, I forgot his name. Oh, wait. It's Dan Green. Dan Green. Hey, dude. Dude. Uh, you you did a, uh, you do a good job voicing Master Chief. I have heard your voice inside the Halo games. I just started playing them now. Now, so. <laughs> Amazing job, dude. Amazing job. Yep. Uh, but, yeah. Ironically, though, though, the day we did go to Comic-Con, Con, uh, Con, and I found out that it was his birthday, so. <laughs> uh... Uh, happy belated birthday, I guess. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so uh, I'm just, it, it's just, yeah, definitely not going to forget that. Now, now once that, and now Ethan has, I think, one or two in my uh, mind that he want, that I wanted to meet. Yeah, let's see. I have one I gotta tell you real quick, and the other one I have to remember this one. I do remember this one though is guys, you wanna never believe you'll be mind blowing. You guys will be like right, I'll tell you right now. I met Goku actor himself, Sean Chamel. And I'm so happy to get to meet him. Now we show. Now he did get an autograph, but unfortunately, Ethan doesn't have a wisdom. But I'll pop up a, pic a picture of it right here. I'm pretty sure Ethan has it somewhere in that Facebook Facebook of his. Hey, Facebook. Oh uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But the thing is, must I mention about that? Yeah. Uh, but either way, wait. I'll pop up a picture right probably a 
boat on this uh, on this side of me. Uh, the po poster Ethan got signed. <sighs> Can't say I'm a little jealous. But I did like the I did like that one picture area if you see guys. I like the <laughs> this together. That was a good that was a good uh, image. I can remember it. Yep, yep. Yep, definitely one of the be other ones. Now, another voice actor, I think he said Ethan wanted to meet. I think he was from My Hero Academia, I believe. Oh, I know who. Wait, 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 wait. Are you talking about the was in Wisconsin comic or are you talking about, like... Wisconsin. Oh. Hmm. I remember one that was from Fairy Tale. Oh, that's right, Fairy Tale. That but was right. we didn't get a chance. Do we get a chance to the tent? Yeah, I say no, too. Unfortunately. So, even though we got one. Well, but! Hey, hey, hey. At least it's better than nothing, folks. Uh, but I did get to meet, uh, we, I did get to meet one more, oh, we did get to meet one more. And that was the voice of, mm -mm. let's -a go. I also met him myself. Yep, that's right, we got to meet, meet Charles Merritt, the voice of Mario. Yo, honestly, I was very, uh, honestly, I never thought I'd get to meet him in my whole lifetime, and here we go. Yo, I got to meet him. Yep. You know, that's honestly probably going to be one of my favorite Nintendo moments of all time as well. Well, right <laughs> up there with the Switch event, for sure. Well, I'm glad I get to meet myself. Uh, now, only I can meet one of Sonic's voice actors. Yep, and Matthew Mercer, and a few more other, other uh, voice actors myself. Oh, well, maybe hopefully when this thing is over, we, you and I, I can go to a couple more cons or something and see if we can get some more autographs or... Maybe shout up with a couple of these actors because I never got. I would love to meet any of Sonic's voice actors, really, really, yep. any of them. Um, but uh, yeah, definitely one of the best event events that me and Ethan have ever gone to. If you guys want to check out the vlog, I'll leave a link in the description below. Okay, so there was one more one I did m mention earlier. Earlier, going back back to launch events, uh, an honorable mention is. Uh, one time I went out in the cold, when it was snowing real hard, real hard, to pick up Let's Go Pikachu. I know what you're gonna say. Music clues, you're absolutely crazy to pick up that, that garbage excuse for a game. I had to, guys, I'm collecting all Nintendo Switch exclusives. Exclusives. I kind of am a day one person, person, and plus the snow was getting pretty bad in my area. So I kind of had no choice. Choice, and my family was out of town, so what else could I do? No kidding. Uh, but needless to say, Ethan did pick me up that night. Yup. But, <laughs> that just goes to show how dedicated I am to you, Nintendo. And yes, before you think I'm crazy, I did this time to make sure I was all warmed up in snow and boots and all that. I still got a little snow in my boots, but it, minor details. Details. I did it go there. It was freezing cold, though. Never again, Nintendo. Never again. Yup. I don't think I'll do the same thing for Sonic, Sega. I love the Hedgehog, but not that much. But yeah, that is our top 10 gaming moments, moments of all time. Personally, it's a good list. List of some minor stuff that's happened in video games that really aren't big, big. Some fun live streams that we've had, and some not-so-fun ones. Uh, but uh, also some very pleasant surprises, surprises, and some hard boss battles. Oh, yes, yes. And, uh, of course, guys, if we mentioned about this one game we just talked about, Dark Souls. Alright, folks. My next process to hopefully beat, hopefully it'll help me out to start out playing, is Covain's. But I guarantee you that Blaine and Namco difficulty is probably going to get the best of him. Best of him a little bit, because if Soul Calibur force anything to go by, Blaine and Namco is really tough. Obviously, they used the up on Soul Calibur 6 due to it being a soft reboot. But still, still, that doesn't mean, mean, uh, mean they can't cast a challenge. Well, <laughs> that's true. Uh. Hmm? Oh, hang on, folks. <laughs> yeah. 
why don't you tell him any he had extra game in his line? I will do so. Alright. Let me see real quick. Some news real quick. Mm-hmm. Alright, so let me see here. What was it that one news I had here we should talk about? I'm here. Oh, by the way, speaking of Dark Souls, I should mention this. Dark Souls series shipments and digital sales top 27 million. Dark Souls 3 tops 10 million units. You hear me? 10 million units. After I found that out at first, I was like, Are you serious? Are you serious? How come this series went so high? Wow, because me and a lot of people really love that type of series. But me though, eh, <laughs> I mean, I may, I may start and try my best to learn about them, but I still have trouble. So, hopefully, Cold Veins will change my mind and keep going that motivation. So, yeah, that'll be the day that I just wish this will happen. <sighs> And recently, Shato Taroki just joined Jump Force, so that's what I, I heard myself in Jump Force. Let's see. It says Sony will announce PlayStation 5 game lineup soon. Oh boy. How soon we're talking here? Better be good though. Ah, oh, jeez. Okay. To get this over with, for, we, for when MC comes here, let's say there is new Ghost of Tsushima info. You can freely switch between Semi and Ghost play styles. Very challenging. MC, yeah, after you he heard that first, he's difficult about it at that point. Hopefully, now that people hope, hoping that, well, I'm hoping that um, it isn't like Shackro clone. So, yep. No marker exp expiration is a key focus. Biggest world SP, which is Sucker Punch, has done yet multiple bummies. <clears throat> Map in Sucker Punch just had small portion of s start area. Oh, jeez. Oh, jeez. <clears throat> Oracle's Shima info. No mortality system. Main weapon is Katana, but there are other and gadgets. Visuals inspired by Legend of Zelda and Shadow of the Colossus. Killing animals. No awards. Not surprised. Music composed by... Can't say his name, but I'll say that. And other than that, that's the news. So from the Ghost of Shima info, that is. And I'm not going to let that stop me when they, they say so. Oh, I was just talking about the, the Ghost of Shima detail. Oh, nice. Nice. Alright, guys. Anyways... That is it for this uh, little premiere, premiere video. So the next chart makers we're going to be doing, but this isn't going to be till next month. We will be recording this a day after this recording. recording. But uh, the next chart makers I have planned for June as part of our digital summer is our top 10 slash 15 hardest bosses slash levels. These are the bosses and levels that made me and Ethan just want to... Pretty much fall down on control and walk out the door. Door. Yup. I can only imagine a couple. Yup, me too, man. Just, just, just thinking about them just makes me... Uh, anyways, that's all for now. So this is yours truly, Music Clues. Ethan, I'm out. And y'all have a nice gaming day.